Images of what appears to be brand new SRAM Red Access have leaked online and there's so much cool tech to check out. Two brand new race bikes have also been spotted as the Pro Peloton gears up for the 2024 season. We have what looks like a new Trek and Monda climbing bike and there's a new aero racer in the form of the Factor Ostro. With me to discuss it all is Bike Radar's man for all things aero, it's Simon von Bromley. Simon, should we start with SRAM Red? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, Simon, SRAM Red is an immensely popular group set, but it is well due an update. Can you sum up what these images show us? So the leaked images show an updated rear derailleur, a cassette and a chain, as well as the new hydraulic disc brake calipers and rotors. Now the new cassette confirms that the SRAM Red Access Group set will remain 12 speed, while the new rear derailleur, chain, brake calipers and rotors look to have had a lot of excess material moved in order to save weight. Wow, we do love a bit of weight saving. That shot of the rear derailleur, it shows quite a few modifications. Can you take us through it? Yeah, now historically, you know, SRAM's red group sets were among the lightest available for road bikes. Now in its final mechanical iteration, Red 22 had a claimed weight of just 1,741 grams, for example, but the move to its wireless electronic form and the addition of disc brakes has seen the overall weight creep up in recent years. Now, SRAM's current red ETAP access group set, for example, is claimed to weigh 2,518 grams, so quite a bit heavier. Yeah, I guess it's natural to see SRAM looking to cut the weight, but how are they really doing that? So basically, it looks like Drillium is back. Now, Yay. the new rear derailleur appears to have a number of areas hollowed out to shave weight. The design is a bit reminiscent of Campagnolo's skeleton brakes, or the kind of, yeah, Drillium that you'll often see on hill climb bikes. The parallelogram in particular, which links the kind of upper and lower pivot points, appears to have very large holes yeah. in both the inner and outer plates, while the derailleur cage also looks to have excess material removed, with the new pulley wheels looking a little bit more exposed. It looks like the, at the rear of the derailleur, SRAM seems to be sticking with the same access battery layout as before. And maybe this saves a gram, but the upper pivot also sees less black paint used and more polished metal. The cassette shown in the leaked images also looks like the current 12-speed one to me. Yeah, now the images are a bit blurry, but it does look like it starts with a 10-tooth cog and uses uh, tight single-tooth jumps for the first six cogs in the block. Now, while it might seem a little bit disappointing at a glance to not see bigger changes, this cassette design could actually be quite good because it bodes well for backwards compatibility between the existing SRAM red parts and then, you know, any new ones. Now, certainly, this suggests that SRAM will be sticking with its XDR free hub standard and similar gear ratios as before. And so again, this just doubles down on that easier upgrade path for owners of existing SRAM Axis group sets. Now, the chain, however, that has been modified. Yeah, and it's sticking with the same flat top design that SRAM has been using with its uh, Access Row group set, but the inner and outer links have both been hollowed out for even more weight savings. So as suspected, there's a new shifter design, different from anything else in SRAM's road access range. Yeah, so the new shifter body looks to have been notably slimmed down compared to the existing red ETAP axis shifters, while the brake lever and shifter paddles have also seen a significant redesign. Now the brake lever appears to have been a bit elongated, meaning it's a bit longer. It curves out more towards the top before sweeping back in and out at the bottom to create little finger hooks when you're riding in the drops. The single shifter paddle means SRAM is probably sticking with its double tap shifting logic. Uh, it's now taller and slimmer than before though. Yes, now the increased height should mean that riders can reach it from a kind of greater range of hand positions on both the kind of hoods and the drops. But I think that shorter width to the paddle should mean that if you've dialed in the lever reach, you know, you've got small hands or small fingers, you shouldn't contact the bar so much. That's good. Uh, SRAM also looks to have updated the texture of the shifter paddle itself with what appear to be prominent diagonal grooves running across it. And what's that? Is that a small rubber cover on the brake lever just in front of the pivot point? Yeah, so given the kind of images that were leaked of the patents of the new shifters and the kind of redesigned internals, I reckon that's something to do with an access point for the hydraulic reservoir, you know, perhaps to speed up leading processes for the kind of busy professional mechanics out there. I think the brakes also look like they've gone on a bit of a diet. That's right. Now the calipers have two hollow points on each side and the area around the kind of internal pistons also appears to be machined out much more aggressively than before. 
the kind of uh, disc brake rotors don't look too dissimilar to before, but again, weight reenie treatment, they've been kind of hollowed out a little bit more on the carrier around which the brake track floats. So given the leaked images show what looks like a finished group set, it's reasonable to assume an official launch isn't too far off. So Simon, the last thing to say on this is what haven't we seen? So we haven't seen any pictures of the new crank set and chain rings or the front derailleur. Obviously, plenty more to be seen there, so do tune in whenever the official launch comes. We did ask Sram for a comment. What did they say, Liam? They said no comment, <laughs> naturally. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Okay, Simon, on to the Trek Amanda, which we have one rather low-res photo of. Uh, but something that is easy to see is that the new bike features a similar cutout to the current Trek Madone. Simon, tell me what is Isoflow? So Isoflow is a feature that debuted on the kind of current Trek Madone SLR. Essentially, it's a kite-shaped hole in the seat tube, and then the seat post kind of cantilevers out behind it. And Trek says that the hole accelerates the airflow through it and kind of reduces the low pressure weight that follows the mm. bike. This confers an aerodynamic benefit, and then the cantilevered seat post adds comfort because it can flex. Now, Trek designed this in order to get rid of the previous ISO speed decoupler system that it had in the older mm. Trek Madone. And it says this new design, more aerodynamic and saves weight and is just as comfortable. So it's win, win, win. And I imagine that Trek thinks it will perform similarly well on its newer Monda bike. It may be it's you know, lighter, more aerodynamic, more comfortable. And Trek is now looks to be porting it across to its kind of climbing bike, mm. currently called the Amanda. So this looks to be a brand new Trek Amanda. This one, this hole is a bit smaller to my eye than the one on the Madone. So maybe there's a smaller aero benefit to be had with that. The whole bike looks to have kind of slimmer overall tubing, yeah. which would, which is what making us think it's an Amanda really, because it's going to obviously be lighter if the tubes mm. are smaller, because obviously smaller tubes are lighter than bigger ones. So yeah, I would imagine that on this bike, the kind of ISO flow hole will be smaller as well. And then yes, perhaps that will have a smaller aerodynamic effect, but it will still bring something plus a comfort gain. Cause obviously there's, mm. you know, Trek used to use its ISO speed decouplers, but obviously they add weight and on a climbing bike, you can't have added weight. No. Another brand new bike that we spotted is the updated Factor Ostro Vam. Simon, what are you spotting from the images that we've seen? So, so far, we've only seen a few images from the Tour Down Under, but it looks like a more evolution, not revolution update yeah. for the new Factor Ostro. Certainly seen a kind of more profiled head tube, looks more hourglass shaped. So like you said, Factor is seem to be focusing on the front end for mm. this new bike. Perhaps the fork has got to a little bit deeper as well. The seat tube looks to have been slimmed down a little bit, which may add a little bit more comfort. I just want to jump in there because that seat tube looks to me like it's come straight from Cube's, uh, what is it, the Lightning, the Lightning SLT or something like the that. Yeah. Cube, I think it's the Lightning Light Air, and you're yeah. right, it does, it's uncanny. Yeah, funny that. Um, the other frame feature that this bike borrows is the kind of top tube, let's call it the taper from the O2 van. Yeah, that's right. And so it gets much thinner along the top. Mm. And I think, you know, I reviewed the, the, the kind of current Factor Ostro Vam and I thought it was great. But one of my criticisms of it was that the seat post clamp was in a really awkward area in between the junction of the seat tube and the top tube. And it required like a really annoying special tool to access it that if you didn't have, you, it, if you just use a normal torque wrench, it would foul the top tube. <laughs> and obviously, you know, if you've just spent you know, thousands of pounds or dollars on a new bike, that's really annoying. Yeah. So it looks like Factor has moved the seat post clamp to the rear of the seat tube, a little bit like on the Pinarello Dogma F. And now it has a two bolt design just on the back of the seat tube. You can use a standard tool from the looks of things and it looks much better. Now that's not a huge performance upgrade, but if you've got a bike and it saves you damaging your top tube, I think that's a really good change. In a development for Aerotech, <laughs> Cask and Pock have launched new helmets. I'm so sorry. That's right. Pictures posted to Instagram from an Ineos Grenadiers training camp have prompted speculation that Cask is about to release a brand new aero helmet. So the photo shoot was actually to reveal Ineos Grenadiers' new Go Big kit and fresh Pinarello Dogma F paint job. But the images of Ghana's headgear are more interesting. <laughs> That's right, they show the Italian hour record holder wearing an unreleased helmet in similarities to the kind of current Utopia road model and the Bambino time trial helmet. The pattern of vents at the front of the helmet is similar to the Utopia Wise. 
However, the vents are smaller and spaced further apart on the new helmet. Now, the rounder shape and absence of side vents bear close resemblance to the Bambino Pro. I can't believe we're talking about any of that though, because the big news is that it covers the tops of your ears. Yeah, <laughs> fashion faux pas, I yeah. would say. And this is obviously a design borrowed from time trial helmets. Now, the interesting thing is there's nothing against, and there's no rules stopping anyone wearing a time trial helmet in a road race. It's pure fashion and yeah. the fact that obviously time trial helmets can be pretty stuffy. But Cask obviously thinks that just covering the top half of your ears is going to give you maybe half of that gain, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing that you know, you put ears in CFD, they're just not very aerodynamic. Mine aren't, that's for sure. <laughs> You've had your ears put in CFD? I have, wow, definitely. Wow, things you learn about Liam on this show. <laughs> And it's not just cask that have been at it. Uh, Pox effort is even more radical. The design looks like a scaled back version of the Pox Pro Sen TT helmet. That's right, it covers the top half of the rider's ears in a similar but arguably even more extreme version than the uh, cask era helmet that we saw on Filippo Garner's Instagram. But the Pox helmet also looks set to revive the integrated aero visor for road helmets, something which had fallen out of favour in recent years. I'm not sure how I feel about all of this. Uh, I hope that aero tech is a phase that really doesn't catch on. New shoes, mate. I, I love a pair of shiny new shoes, and Remco Avenapol appears to be sporting a pair of new specialised kicks. That's right, these could be a new version of the Aeros. Now, the shoes Remco is wearing feature a similar looking sock portion on the top of the foot with a big strap wrapping over to anchor the foot. I have to say though, all I can see is one closure dial. Uh, we'll have to wait for more info on these, but they look very interesting. That's right, and Bontrager also looks set to release some new shoes with Jacopo Mosca spotted in these fancy numbers at the Tour Down Under. Bontrager's current shoes haven't been updated in around four years, so it is high time for an upgrade. Unfortunately, this looks like a big one. The main feature is a knitted construction, which we think will be a first for Bontrager. No, I can't think that's of another not true. There's the Bontrager. I think they had the Bontrager Ballista Knit shoe. Oh, well, that's some knowledge. That is going to be very nice in the sweltering sun of Australia, but it's going to be a nightmare to keep them clean in the UK right now. So, new SRAM Red, new bikes, new shoes, and new helmets. You're going to have a very busy time testing all of that in the coming months, mate. I will indeed, and what a yes. privilege. And if you want to see our reviews of these products when we hopefully finally get our hands on them make sure that you are subscribed to our wonderful channel so that you don't miss out on anything thank you for coming on simon thank you for watching and we will see you next time